Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been quite a while since I made my last video, but yeah, I'm back. I'm here. I've just been really, really busy. Today, what we're going to do is since it's been a while since I've made a YouTube video, I'm just going to do like a speed round of all of the books that I've read recently and kind of give a little review on each one really, really quickly. We're going to start off with a book that I actually read on my phone. It was called Electric Idols. If you don't know, it is the second book to the Neon Gods series or it was it called it's like the dark it's called the dark olympus series oh my god that took me so long to figure out anyways honestly i kind of had high hopes for this book for electric idols i don't have the physical copy with me but i had high hopes for this book and it just for me did not deliver i just felt like okay well i'll talk about what i loved about it i loved the plus size representation i like the dynamic that the author was going for. The trope of marriage of convenience, because it is marriage of convenience, the bad guy, you know, brooding, dark character, and like a sweet girl, you know, and the sweet girl getting tainted. That's, I, I love that premise, okay? I just feel like it didn't execute well to me. It just felt like it moved so slowly. Like, it, it was so, it was insta-lovey, but at the same time, it moved so slowly. So this book follows Psyche and Cupid. What's his name? I even forgot his name in the, in the book. It's like, Ambrose? I don't fucking know. Anyways, follow Psyche, Psyche and Cupid. I'm just gonna say Cupid because that's the, that is like the retelling that it's telling. Like the first one, the world building is not what you're reading it for. You're reading it for like the smut and whatever and you're reading it for the romance. The world building is still kind of weird like the first one. It's like Olympus, but you just have to kind of like get over that fact and I loved the first one for some reason like I ate that shit up I read it so quickly and this one for some reason it just felt so slow yet also so fast like it was insta lovey right which I will read insta love in a hot in like quickly but it took so long it was up to the 50% mark and the whole time all Cupid and Psyche were doing was getting ready for a wedding like, they didn't even get married yet. It's a marriage convenience, and they didn't even get married until the 50% mark of the book. And I feel like the conflict, because the conflict is um, Cupid's mom. Cupid's mom is Aphrodite. Aphrodite wanted to kill Psyche. That's why Cupid and Psyche get married, because they think that if they get married, it's going to make Aphrodite not want to kill Psyche anymore, because that's technically her mother-in-law now. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, so they were like, oh, if we get married, like, Aphrodite won't go after you, you know, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. It ends up being the conflict is, oh, never mind, she's still gonna try to kill you, she's still gonna try to go after you, Aphrodite's still gonna try to go after Psyche, and it just, the conflict of this just felt so weird, like, it was so stagnant for the whole book, and nothing really happened until the very, very end, and I just feel like because of that, because of how slowly it moved, I didn't feel the relationship and the romance in this as much. That's kind of the reason why I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. I think if I gave it a reread, knowing what I know now, I probably would like it a little bit more just because now I know, you know? But I guess maybe I did have higher expectations for this book and it just didn't deliver for me. So 2 out of 5 stars for Electric Idols. Um, Next, after Electric Idols, I read a super, super popular book on TikTok, on, on, on everywhere. It's Colleen Hoover, so it's popular, okay? It's Verity by Colleen Hoover. I think this was her first attempt at mystery, and I must say, I liked it, but I didn't love it. I gave it a 4 out of 5. I'm going to try to be very non-spoiler about this because a lot of people, you know, I just feel like if you're reading this, you don't want the spoilers. But 
I personally just found it really predictable. The story follows a writer, a ghost writer. Throughout the story, sh this ghost writer is writing for this other author named Verity. And goes through her office, the, the ghost writer's name is Lowen. Lowen goes through Verity's office to try to finish Verity's series while Verity is like in a coma basically and during looking through Verity's office it's her office is in her home her house Verity's house is very very creepy she talks with Verity's husband and her kid and things like that and in Verity's office finds a manuscript for an unpublished autobiography that Verity wrote and it's just really creepy and so the book um, per, per chapter, per every different chapter, goes back and forth between the manuscript and the present day. Honestly, I found it to be really predictable. Like, I thought a couple of things. Um, and I'm, this is gonna be non-spoiler right now. I was like, I know where this is going, or I have clues as to where this is going, etc, etc. And the way it ended, I was just kind of like, I don't know. I think it maybe if people don't read mystery or don't think about mystery as much, they would have that shock reading this. But when I was reading it, I was just like, it makes sense. The ending makes sense. And like that mystery and that like cliffhanger or whatever makes sense because of all the clues that they put throughout the story. Like, Verity's a writer. Like, you gotta think about that, you know? Like, she's a writer. And the story just felt so obvious to me. And also, I just, personally, everyone was saying, oh my god, it's like a very compulsive read, etc, etc. I personally found it pretty slow. I was really not that interested in the present-day Lowen's story, like the ghostwriter. I was not really interested in Lowen's story. And then Lowen gets into, like, this relationship with Verity's husband, um, because etc etc like but I just didn't find that part as interesting as the manuscript part so I just kind of wanted to keep skimming over the present day parts but I didn't I think it's because I've also before I've read Gillian Flynn and she just does really slow burn really great so sus not suspense but like mystery and I just feel like as of as a first go at mystery, the vibes of this were immaculate. I loved the vibes. That's why I gave it a four out of five because it was an interesting read. I just feel like I knocked it down a peg because it was very obvious to me and the writing was super simple. But the vibes were great. I loved the vibes. It was creepy, very creepy, and I will give it that for Colleen Hoover, especially being a mainly a, a romance writer, and switching over to this. I think this was a really great first one for her. So yeah, that's my review on Verity by Colleen Hoover, 4 out of 5. After I read Verity, I went back to the basics and the roots of best-selling YA dystopian novels. The selection. Because I was watching something or I don't know yada 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 about this series becoming a TV show. I ate this shit up but it's definitely 2012 Demi. Like 2012 me would love this book, would be obsessed with a book like this but I think I am just a little bit too old now. There was just no substance to this, you know, which is really funny. So let me just, let me see the rating that I gave this first. So I rated this a 3.5 out of 5 because I did enjoy it, but this is the most, the most, I'm not like most girls, book I have ever read. This is definitely like 2012 Tumblr girl vibes because America is, America the main character, because of the way she talks about other women and the way that the book itself and the author herself talks about other women who like to dress up, who like to wear makeup and things like that as if those are things that make you lesser or make you not stand out. Like, America's supposed to be this like amazing girl because oh, she doesn't like to wear a lot of makeup and she's natural and doesn't like blah blah. I'm like, girl, 
I'm too old for this. Like, this is 2021 now. I mean, 2021. This is 2022 now, okay? Like, we love a girl who beats her face, you know? We do not give a shit. If you love to beat your face, you do that. And whatever floats your boat, you do you. And that does not make you lesser or, or greater or whatever. Just because you like to wear a lot of makeup does not mean that you're trying to cover yourself up. It just means that you like to wear a lot of makeup. So the messaging of this book, it's very YA. But the thing I will say about it, so, oh my god, I never even talked about the premise. I just assumed that people knew the premise of the selection because it's like a really, really popular book. I was writing my Goodreads reviews. I saw that it had over a million ratings, which is insane because other books that have over a million ratings are all of the classics and like Twilight and the Bible and and like Fifty Shades of Grey and shit like that, and like Harry Potter. But most of the books that are even bestsellers and super popular today, even like Aquatar, like that whole series, doesn't have over a million ratings. So this was probably super popular back then. I never heard of it until recently, honestly, and I just wanted to read it to like get the feel of it. But anyways, I just assumed that you knew what the book was about when you might not. Basically the premise is The Bachelor, 25 or is it 35 35 girls going after one guy but but like make it royalty so all of these 25 35 girls are trying to go after a prince and then on top of that it's in a dystopian america so this is after world war three like post world war three era and combined all that together you get the selection and the selection is who is gonna get selected to be a part of this bachelor and get with the main guy prince maxton etc etc and then there's this whole cast system that are based off numbers so if you're it's like districts from the hunger Games. so if you're in district one you're like super rich right and you're in district 12 you're like the lower class or whatever this has a similar thing so if you're like a five, six, seven, eight, then you're poor or like very lower class. But if you're like a one, two, three, you're like super, super rich and shit like that. So there's a caste system and it kind of talks a little bit about that politically. I only gave it a 3.5 out of 5 just because for a book that talks about being genuine, because they talk about it all the time, right? Like all of these girls, all these 35 girls, they really, really want to get with the prince because he's the freaking prince. For a book that always said to just, oh, you know, like the prince is trying to find love and you don't wanna just try to people please, you wanna be yourself. That's what they keep saying, be yourself, be genuine. And if you're genuine and he doesn't like you, then obviously it wasn't meant to be. Like you weren't meant to be together, et cetera, et cetera. It talks so much about being genuine and being real and getting deep. But for a book that talks so much about that, it was kind of shallow and a little bit surface level. Like the way they talked about things. I already talked about the makeup situation and they talked about the clothing and even the relationships themselves. The relationship between Prince Maxton and America just didn't really feel it building that much. And they just had some conversations here and there, but all of the conversations that they had, it was like the reason why Maxton liked America was because she was, I'm not like most girls type, you know? Like that's literally the whole reason they kind of give. And then America also, before she gets on this Bachelor-esque thing, gets on the selection, she didn't want to be on it because she had a lover back in her hometown named Aspen but then also I feel like the relationship between Aspen and America weren't super deep like you didn't really get that feel emotionally why they loved each other and it was just really I don't know up in the air type of situation like with all the relationships they just kind of felt very shallow but I enjoyed this book like I and I thoroughly enjoyed it and Prince Maxton he is such a sweetheart like he's so innocent and smart I love the little banter some of the parts that have with the banter was kind of cute like he's never kissed a girl and so he like goes for it and he's like oh my god did I do it bad and I'm just like sweetie Maxton in my head as a reader I'm like sweetie Maxton you can never do anything wrong honey like you know like 
I was simping, okay? I was simping for this white man. I give this a 3.5 out of 5. I will continue the series because it is a very easy read. One other thing that I did not like about this book, or I guess I just found really weird, the writing, way too many exclamation points. In every other sentence of dialogue, they put exclamation points at the end. You know you can show emotion in another way. Exclamation points in this book is similar to Sarah J's mass relationship with M dashes. Like there's just an abundance of M dashes. This one has an abundance of exclamation points and for no reason at all. Like what? Why do they have so many exclamation points? It just doesn't even fit. Okay, like right here. Maxton and America are talking about, I guess, movies that they watch. And they're saying like, oh, what kind of genre do you like, et cetera, et cetera. And then Maxon says, oh no, America says, honestly, I don't know. I don't get to watch a lot of movies, but I like romance books. And comedies too! I'm just like, girl, why do you have to scream that? Like, chill, chill. They just come out of nowhere, honestly. And that happens so much in this book, in so much of the dialogue. Yeah, that's my review on the selection. 3.5 out of 5. Thank you so much for watching. I know this is kind of a chaotic, random ass books that I was reviewing, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of get it all out of the way and talk about all of these these books they all were amazing where I wanted to give their own video to each one so I decided to just put it all together this is like a reading wrap-up of the last two weeks I guess but yeah thank you so much for watching if you've read any of these books the books being Electric Idols, Verity, or The Selection please let me know your thoughts on any of these books in the comments I love to talk about it and yeah I will see you in the next one